In this video, we're going to talk about logarithmic functions. Okay, now the, the usefulness, um, or part of the usefulness of logarithmic functions, has to do with the fact uh, that they're the inverse of the exponential functions. So since an exponential function is 1 to 1, it has to have an inverse. Okay, and that's where these things come from. So let's define a logarithmic function. So a logarithmic function is a function, or actually I should say with base a, is a function, and again I got ahead of myself, okay, so where um, a is bigger than zero and not equal to one, So it is a function of the form um, f of x, or y, equal to log base a of x. Okay, so that's how you want to read this. So it's log base a of x. Um, okay, and is defined by... So by its relationship with um, the exponential functions. Okay, so y is equal to log base a of x if and only if a to the power y is equal to x. Okay, now this is a very important relationship to remember. Okay, so let's, I put in a different color box, hopefully it stands out. Um, so what happens, so the y value here is the exponent up here. Okay, so log base a of x equals the exponent we need to raise a to to get x. Okay, so that's the idea. Um, another way to remember, I'm going to do it down here. Okay, so to switch the base is the base. Okay, so what I mean by that is the base of the log is the base of the exponential and vice versa. Okay, so the base is the base and the other things switch sides. So obviously you need to remember in order for this to work that if you're leaving an exponential, you're going to uh, a log and if you're leaving a log, you're going to an exponential. Okay, but the other things, by other things, I mean um, x and y. Okay, so they switch whether or not they're with the a or not. Okay, another way to think about this is if we were trying to find the inverse of the exponential function y equals a to the x, this is what we would have after we switch the variables, so switch x and y, and this is telling us how to solve it. Okay, so if you have this, this is how you solve for y. That means that this is the inverse of a to the x. Okay, so that's, maybe I'll write that. Um, so if f of x is a to the x, then f inverse of x is log base a of the x. Okay, so they're inverses of each other, and so similarly, the inverse of the log is the exponential. So let's do an example. Okay, log base 3 of 81 is 4 because 3 to the power 4 is equal to 81. Okay, 3 to the 3 is 27, times 3 again is 81. So this... 
this thing here is the exponent that I need to raise 3 to in order to get 81. Okay, now if I have an exponential and I want to convert to a log, okay, so it's going to be log base 3, okay, so because it, the base is the base, okay, so the base of the exponential becomes the base of the log, and the other thing switch sides. So the x here was with the base, was with 3, so that means that the x is going to be on the other side of the equals, and then the 4.6 is going to be with the base 3. Okay, so x is equal to log base 3 of 4.6. Now I'm going to leave uh, number 2 for you, example 2 for you to do, so it's just going the other way, but using the same idea. And let's evaluate some of these logs, okay? So if I want to do log base 5 of 1 over 25, I want 5 to what power is equal to 1 over 25? Okay, because that power is the answer to um, the log here. So I want to write 1 over 25 as a power of 5. So I could write 25 as 5 squared, and then I know that this is 5 to the negative 2. So this is equal to negative 2. So it's the exponent I need to raise 5 to in order to get 1 over 25. Okay, let's try it again. So um, for the next one, I would want log to sorry, not log, I would want 2, so it is log base 2 of negative 8. So if this is equal to x, that means 2 to the power x should equal negative 8. Um, so if I, what, what number do I need to raise 2 to in order to get negative 8? Well, I can never actually get a negative, okay, so 2 to the x is never negative. Okay, so that means that this actually has no solution, so this does not exist. Okay, there's no solution there. Now log base 2 uh, of root 2 is going to be 1 half, since 2 to the power 1 half is equal to root 2. Okay, so the power here is the answer here. So 2 to what power equals root 2? Well, that's power 1 half. Okay, I'm going to leave these other two for you to do. Okay, so you can try those on your own. Um, so let's talk about the uh, domain and range of the log function. Okay, now the domain of the log should be equal to the range of the exponential function because they're inverses. So if you remember the exponential function, okay, it looks like that when a is bigger than 1. The range is bigger than 0. So that means that the domain here is going to be bigger than 0, or from 0 to infinity. Okay. Similarly, the range of log, x, log base a of x should be equal to the domain of the exponential function. So I have the graph up above, so I can plug in any x value up there. So the domain is all real numbers, or x from negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so they flip. So, the, so I, what this tells me is that I can only plug in positive numbers here. As we just saw in this example here, if I plug in a negative number, I'm going to have a positive number to some power equals some negative number, and that just can't work. Okay, so the, I can, this, this thing here has to be positive. So what if I wanted to find the domain of some complicated expression with a log? Okay, so this is the domain of f of x is log base 4 of this whole expression. Well, we would need that expression on the inside, so 1 minus x to be, or 1 over 1 plus x to be bigger than 0. So we'd have to solve that inequality, which is something, this is a rational, an inequality involving a rational function. So we could, um, we'd want to know where it's 0 and where it's undefined. 
and then we'd make our number line. Okay, so because we already did this, I'm doing it a bit faster. Um, so on our number line, we're going to have um, negative one because that is where the bottom equals zero. Okay, and we're also going to have positive one because that is where the top equals zero. Okay, so down here, this is where the function equals zero and this is where the function doesn't exist. So those are the two places where it can change. And then I just want to test a number in each interval. So maybe I plug in negative two. So that's uh, one minus negative two over one plus negative two. So it's three over negative one. So here it's negative. If I try zero between one and negative one and one, that's going to be one minus zero over one plus zero. So it's one, which is a positive number. And if I plug in say two, then I have one minus two over one plus two. So that's negative one over three. So that's a negative number. So that means that this interval here, okay, is where the only place where one minus x over one plus x is bigger than zero. So that tells us the domain. So the domain of my function f of x with the log base four is gonna be the interval from negative one to one. Okay, or negative one less than x less than one. So that would be how I find the domain there. Um, there are some special logs that we have special notation for. Okay, so ln base ln of x is actually log base e of x. Okay, so this is when this is log base e. This is called the natural logarithm. Okay, now I don't really like that they've written it with this. So just be aware, this is a lower case L. Okay, here and also down here. Okay, so it, especially when you're using web work, um, it looks like it could be a capital I. It is not. It's a lower case L. So that's how you're going to want to enter it. Okay, now if they write log with no base, what you want to assume is it's log base 10 of x. Okay, so this is base 10. And that's called the common logarithm. Okay, these are the ones that your calculator has buttons for. Okay, so if you're using the proper calculator that Camosun usually allows, um, these are the only two logs that you should be able to compute using your calculator. Okay, so ln, the natural log, and log, the common log. So base e or base 10. So for example, log of 100, so this is log base 10 of 100. Okay, it's going to be 2 since 10 squared is equal to 100. Okay, so this is two because the, it's that power. Okay, graphing logs, um, you can graph the exponential. So because they're inverses of the exponential, you just switch the coordinates, okay, to get the graph. Um, and so it's a flip over the line y equals x. Uh, it also switches the horizontal asymptote to be a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that's the idea. So let's graph um, e to the x again. So I'm going to plot a few points here. Um, okay, so I have here and then there's a point at 1 and e and e is about 2.7. Okay, and then at 2 and e squared 3, 6, 7. And then I have a point over here. Okay, so this is 0, 1. This is 1 e, which is 1 and approximately 2.7. Okay, this one is 2 and e squared. 
which is 2 and 7.4 approximately. And then down here I have negative 1 and 1 over e, which is negative 1 and approximately 0.37. Okay, and then my graph goes through those. So, oh, and I have the horizontal asymptote on this side. Okay, so the graph looks like that. Okay, so then when I'm graphing, so this is the graph y equals e to the x. So if I want to graph the graph of ln x, which is log base e of x, all I have to do is switch those each coordinate. So instead of 0, 1, I have a point at 1, 0. Instead of 1 and e, I have e and 1. So e is about 2.7 and 1. And then I have e squared and 2, so 7.4. So 3, 6, 7. And that's where the 2 is. Okay, at 0 0.37, I'm at negative 1. Okay, and then the asymptote is actually down this way. So it's at x equals 0. So, oh, and I wanted to write those points in. So this is the point uh, 1, 0. This is the point e and 1, e squared and 2. And this is um, 1 over e and negative 1. So you just swap the points, swap the x and y coordinates, and we get a graph that looks like that. Oops. It grows really slowly. Okay, but it does approach infinity. Okay, eventually. So this graph, even though it grows really quickly, it does exist for all x. Like there's no vertical asymptote. It just keeps going, right? Um, same here. So this one keeps going. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, just very slowly. Okay, so that's the graph of lawn. Now I'm going to skip this transformation, so um, I want you to try that. And it gives you a hint here to start with the graph of 2 to the x, to find the graph of log base 2, and then do the transformations that you need to do. Um, and then you can answer the questions about those graphs, okay? because I want to start talking about solving log equations. Um, so again, part 1. Uh, so if you want to solve a log equation that has a single log, Okay, what we want to do is isolate the log and then convert the equation. So that's using that um, relationship that I said was really important to remember. So log y equals log base a of x is the same. So I'm going to do a double arrow as a to the y is equal to x. So you can go back and forth. Okay, so you can go this way or you can go that way, depending on what you need to do. Um, and then uh, solve whatever you get. But now you want to remember that you, you need to check your answer here. Okay, so you might get extraneous answers sometimes. So let's just do this sort of easy example. Um, so I have a single log. Um, so what I want to do is I'm going to use the switch. Okay, so this is the same as saying 7 squared is equal to x. Okay, so that immediately I get x is 49. Okay, so that's my answer. Um, now I should check that that works. So I'd want log base 7 of 49. Okay, that has to be 2 since uh, 7 squared is equal to 49. Okay, so that works out. Nothing bad happens, so that is my solution. Now, make sure that you check though, because uh, the input of the log must be positive. And also, if uh, if the x is in the base, the base has certain conditions as well. So you want to make sure that it satisfies those conditions. So I'm going to leave number 8 for you to do. Um, let's find the inverse of this one, though. So to find the inverse, so ln is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, So a transformation of it is also a one-to-one -one function. So to find the inverse, I replace f of x with y. Okay, um, and then 
First thing I do is switch. So I'm going to have x equals negative 5 ln of y minus 8 plus 1. Okay, so that's my switch. Okay, and then I want to solve. So I want to get the ln by itself. So let's move the 1 over. So I have x minus 1 is equal to negative 5 ln of y minus 8. And then I can divide by negative 5. So x minus 1 over negative 5 is equal to ln of y minus 8. And now I, now I want to do the switch. So here I remember that this is base e. So this is the same as saying e to the x minus 1 over negative 5 equals y minus 8. So now I can add the 8 over. So I get y equals e to the x minus 1 over negative 5 plus 8. Okay, so that's my inverse function. So now that I've solved for y, so the inverse is e to the negative x minus 1 over 5 plus 8. Okay, so you want to isolate the log and then use the, the switch. Okay, so this is using using the relationship between uh, log and, well actually I should, I might as well just say lawn and e um, to do that. Uh, and then I just solve for y. Um, so, you can also use this if an exponential function has a single base. Um, so you can use that switch to, and then you'll get the log of a value. Um, so isolate the exponential first, okay, and then use the swap. Um, and if your base is e or 10, then you should be able to compute the answer using your calculator. Okay, I'm gonna leave number 10 for you to do. So there's a few applications of this logs. Um, I'm just going to do one of them. Um, so you can try the other ones. So I'm going to leave 11 and 12 for you. And then we'll look at number 13 here. So sound intensity is measured sorry, in decibels. And the formula for the loudness of a sound is given by the decibels is 10 times log of I over I naught, where I naught or I zero is the intensity of the threshold sound. Okay, that's a sound that can barely be perceived. Okay, other sounds are defined in terms of how many more, how many times more intense they are than the threshold sound. So that's what this is doing. So a cat's purr is about 316 times as intense as the threshold sound. So we want to find its decibel rating. So we can use that. So the decibel for cats per is going to be 10 times. Now this is log with no base. So that's actually log base 10. Okay. Now we don't know the number for the, the cats per. So the, the I value, maybe I should just write. So the I here is 316 times as intense as the threshold sound. So it's 316 times I zero. Okay. So that's my I. So I have 316 times I0 over I0. So the I0 is actually cancel out. Okay, so I get 10 times log of 316. And if you plug that into your calculator, you should get an answer that's approximately 24.997. So about 25 decibels. To compare, a gunshot, a gunshot fired from a certain type of rifle has an intensity that is quite a lot bigger than the um, threshold sound. So this is our I value. Okay, so it's 2.5 times 10 to the 13 times I zero. So that means the decibels for this one is going to be 10 times log of 2.5 times 10 to the 13 times I zero over I zero. So that's going to be 10 times log 
of 2.5 times 10 to the 13, which is approximately 133.979, if you compute it. So that's about 134 decibels. So much, much more than the, the cat purr. Um, so that is the basics uh, for logarithmic functions.